Maybe, maybe it isn't a good staff report, and you said, but so it's only me that I'm just like yeah. that word, but can I mean, right, before. Sure makes it. Okay. 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 Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the Wednesday, October 2nd, 2024 meeting of the Dunn County Planning Resource and Development Committee. All members of the committee are present. Uh, could I have an approval motion for the minutes from September 18th? I'll make that motion. There you are. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion or corrections? Okay, all in favor of approval, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Minutes are approved. Do we have any public comments other than the hearings or anything? Okay. So then we have two public hearings today. Uh, I'll open the first hearing, which is an application for rezoning from Dunn County to a piece of property from GA to GC. Um, well, let's just go ahead with this since it's our own property. Um, this will be the uh, the only opportunity at this point for public comment. Uh, if there are anybody who wants to speak, we will recognize them. We'll have to swear them in. Um, and the committee may or may not make a decision today, depending upon the discussion. Um, and can you affirm that the uh, Proper noticing has happened, and then give us a staff report. Absolutely. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Ann Wodarczyk, uh, Planner and Zoning Administrator. I can confirm that the hearing notices were both published in the Colfax Messenger and Tribune Press Reporter um, last Wednesday and the Wednesday before. And they were also mailed out to all neighbors within 300 feet and other parties that we were required to mail them to. Yeah, go ahead with the staff report then. All right. All right, just, just to note, um, the staff reports were posted on the public meeting calendar and were not included in the packet. Uh, that was my mistake, so I apologize for that. Um, so I'm just going to go over the first rezone. This is for the property owned by Dunn County, formerly the Dunn County Recycling Center and Transfer Station. Um, <clears throat> So the county's looking at selling this property and I believe that rezoning would ensure that the future use of the property aligns with the long-term goals of the county. Um, it should be noted that the town of Menominee hasn't had a chance to review this yet. Um, their town board um, was going to discuss it at their meeting, but then they decided to send it to their planning commission. Um, the Planning Commission is not meeting in October, so that meeting won't occur until November. So my thoughts on this are that it is really important that we get the town's opinion for this one, um, especially since this is county-owned property. Um, I can go through the staff report. We can have the hearing, however you want to do this, but I just wanted to make you guys aware of that early on. Um. Anybody have any strong feelings about this? So there are options would be to go through the, the report that you've made mm -hmm. and uh, assess it, but uh, and take action, or to uh, go through the report and to postpone action, or to just hold off on the report and everything until we get the all the information needed, and then do it do it at that point. Another there. hearing, yeah. That. Third option seems to me to make the most sense 
to wait Just until we get the, the decision from the from the uh, 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 township and then uh, deal with it at that point in time. Anybody have any problem with that? I, I was just wondering, will there be any difference in the report uh, other than the township's decision? The only thing I think I would possibly change in the report is um, how, let's see, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, public health, safety, welfare, neighborhood impact. So those things could be, those could change based on things that the town gives us for feedback. Mm -hmm. um, my only other concern is if there's somebody here today that wanted to speak for it. Um, um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think I would really need to change anything. In fact, okay. it could stay exactly the same. Okay, and I notice it's just general commercial now. We were considering... Uh, the light industrial is that off the table now or i think when i first uh was proposing this light industrial also made sense um the more i went through it general commercial stood out more um so i went in that direction however there is still it's still open to the committee to decide if one or the other fits better um you know when i presented it to the town when i sent them the email i did ask them to let us know if they had a preference over those two mm -hmm. So, you know, technically the committee can recommend any zoning. It doesn't have to be the one that I'd recommend. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Chair, yeah. it'd be kind of nice to hear her report uh, because people maybe are tuned in uh, uh, online and it would give us a chance to think it over then, too, if we hear what you've got to say. Uh, better that be okay? I think that's a good point, Mike. Thanks for bringing it up. Okay. You're on. I'm open to it. Also, it might help if the town wants to watch this at all or read it too. Um, so I'll go through it. Um, so we looked at section 13.6.0.06 of the zoning ordinance for the procedures that the committee must follow. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, this is to ensure consistency with the comprehensive plan assess the suitability of the property for the proposed use and evaluate potential impacts on surrounding land uses, infrastructure, and public health, safety, and welfare. So we use these criteria to um, write our analysis of the proposal. And I am just going to kind of go through this in my summary. So uh, the property is 10 acres and it is along Highway 29, and I'm just bringing up an aerial map here so we can see it a little better. Um, so it's Highway 29, and then there's a town road. So you can see, I just want to make sure the screen is showing what you guys can see. You can see that the access for the property is off that town road, but it's pretty close to the highway. Um, it's 390th Street that the actual access is off of. Um, so we reached out to the DOT as well, um, and I wanted to read that letter regarding the access. So we just asked, you know, what their opinion was on the access there, because that is kind of a, a difficult intersection, um, pretty high traffic. So uh, Jill reviewed the area in question in reference to access. If this would become commercial, all access would need to come off 390th Street. If there were direct access to State Highway 29, it may require extensive improvements to the highway, which would be at the owner's expense. Um, hope this helps. Any questions, reach out. So originally this was sent to um, Jill Proud and then the response was sent by Rihanna Severson. So I had reached out to them just with a concern that increased traffic here might require some kind of turn lane or something like that. But that is the response we got back. Um, while we have the map up, um, I just kind of wanted to show like some of the uses that are going on around the property. Um, to the east here, we have another Dunn County owned property. This is an agricultural field. It is leased to someone who is using it for crop farming. Um, that's been going on for quite some time. Um, to the south, we have the, I believe this is a landfill that is no longer active. The Enviro Services of Wisconsin owns that property still. Um, going back up toward the highway, 
We have a residence directly to the west and another one a little farther over. And then across the street, quite a distance, we have another residence there. Other than that, it's mostly um, agricultural and woodland. Um, just trying to flip another layer on here. I just want to show the zoning layer as well. So the surrounding zoning for the area is almost entirely general ag. However, you get a little farther away. Um, I believe this is about half a mile, quarter mile away. Um, we have a general commercial property and then we have the city of Menominee. Um, and then we have some residential off to this direction here. All right, so the property was designated as general ag in 2013 when we did the comprehensive rezoning and adopted the Dunn County zoning um, ordinance. Um, so it's, again, the town of Menominee has not reviewed this yet. So looking at the future land use plans, um, I went over the Dunn County comprehensive plan and it identifies uh, the town of Menominee is one of the fastest growing municipalities, um, and there are areas that are earmarked for future growth, um, particularly commercial and residential. Um, this area is one of those areas. Um, we can look at the future land use maps in the packet as well. Those are included in there. Um, so the location and the existing infrastructure do make it a suitable candidate for rezoning. I think this would support the growth objectives in the uh, comprehensive plan. So the property has been used for commercial use in the past, even though it's zoned as general ag. Um, the use as a transfer station was a permitted principal use in general ag. Um, <clears throat> so the ex existing infrastructure is kind of what is a, a little bit of a catalyst in changing this. Um, because this is near the city of Manami and access to 94, um, it has you know really favorable conditions for transportation and utilities. Um, it has a semi-truck scale, um, other things like that, that would be really adaptable for commercial or industrial operations. Um, <clears throat> and it just, it, it would, Possibly, if it was to continue to be used commercially and zoned commercially, it would align with the economic goals of the county in the comprehensive plan. Um, recent development trends in the region uh, indicate a slight shift toward commercial, um, mostly because of the location to the city of Menominee, I believe. Um, the demand for new commercial spaces driven by population growth suggests that the property could serve as a catalyst for more commercial development. Um, not necessarily in that area, but along that corridor. Uh, the surrounding land use patterns are a blend of agricultural, residential, and emerging commercial, um, indicating a transition toward diversified land uses. The proposed rezoning would complement this trend by introducing commercial activities that align with in existing infrastructure and land uses. So I think, you know, just keeping in mind that this has already been used as commercial, it's where we wouldn't be removing it from ag or um, things like that. So um, rezoning the property and as far as neighborhood impact, um, we haven't heard from the town or had any input from neighbors at this point, but we might in the future. So I think that community engagement and um, addressing any concerns that come up with that would help answer this question a little bit better. As of now, Knowing that this has been a commercial site, commercial use site in the past, I don't really see um, a lot of negative impact coming in. Um, so also, we're also looking at the environmental impact too. So we want to make sure that any anything coming in here would be, we would be reviewing those um, if they're building any structures as well. So we're not seeing... Um, a whole lot of change if we change it for to commercial. Um, we don't really see any significant risk to public health or safety. 
provided that commercial development does comply with local, state, and federal rate regulations. Any wastewater, water treatment systems would also have to meet all of these standards. Um, the property doesn't have any known historically significant features. Um, the lack of historical significance means that the proposed rezoning is unlikely to impact any culturally important sites. And we also wanted to look into alternative zoning designations. Um, while the proposed general commercial de designation is aligned with current development trends, it's important that we consider alternative zoning um, options such as residential or ag. Um, residential zoning could be appropriate given the property's proximity to other residences. However, <clears throat> This uh, may be difficult due to the existing infrastructure. All of that would need to be removed um, and converted. We also don't know what the soil looks like there or any other things that might be affected from it being a recycling center. Um, also, agriculture zoning. Um, as far as I know, it's it's not really prime farmland underneath all of this infrastructure and asphalt, but again, if somebody wanted to use it for farming and we required that, they would have to remove all of that infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> so because we haven't had that town discussion with their planning commission yet, and we haven't really gotten an official um, recommendation, I'm recommending that we actually postpone any decision to allow them time to do that. Um, and then it would allow more time for neighboring residents and input from other stakeholders so that we could determine whether this actually serves the public interest. Um, <clears throat> however, the committee has the right to do this decision today and they could move forward. So I leave that to you okay. and that's the end. Any questions? Thank you. Um, has the facilities Committee looked at this at all? Yep, they have. They have, and they've like made the, the choice to go to general commercial? I don't know if they've specifically stated a preference. I can't okay. recall. Anything else? I wonder um, practically if if we if we uh, if we don't need to uh, just uh, what do you call it when you when we <laughs> keep it open. don't close a hearing but keep it open. It's what's the word I'm trying to find? Okay, come on. <laughs> postpone. Uh, we we can postpone the decision, but uh, if we close the hearing and then postpone the decision. We can't accept any new information. Uh, so it seems like it in case say the town came back and or there were other 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 testimony. We'll have some today, but uh, we should try to do that first, but then let's let's think about that. What what uh, uh, how we want to handle it. May I ask first, is there anyone here who wants to could you I'm sorry, could you please come up to the to the I got to do this kind of formally. I mean, it seems oh, awkward, I know, but and I'm I'm going to have to ask your name and address, and I have to swear you in. Uh, Clinton Zach, E thirty eight forty State Road twenty nine, Menominee. Okay, Zach, raise your hand, please. You swear your testimony today will be truthful in every respect. Yes. Okay. Uh, I live just bordering or bordering the property to the west. Uh, my concern is, I know GFL wants that for a transfer station. And now, if you go up 29, now compared to five years ago when the Dunn County operated it, the ditches are so much cleaner because all that waste was blown out of the roll-offs and everything. Uh, Dunn County kept getting earlier and earlier every day when they're operating. And originally that was only supposed to be open like from seven to four every day. That's my concern being living next to it. I don't want if a business opens it, nothing before like seven, you know, seven to five or whatever, you know, limited hours maybe on the weekend. But 
you know, so that's my concern is GFL is going to operate as a solid waste because I know they're transferring waste every morning now to Eau Claire all day long. So, okay, you know, my, my ditches are clean and it's kind of nice, you yeah, know, yeah. but, gotcha. and I know some of that garbage was coming out of ESW's trucks too, you know, people coming into there, but it seems like everybody going to the dump and, you know, was, was the issue. So, but. Oh, uh, anybody have any questions for Zach? Okay. Thanks a lot. Zach. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Okay. So, uh, we may, it seems to me like we might have additional interest in, in testimony going forward too. So what if we, uh, uh, what's the right word? It's not adjourn, is it? Is it uh, I can't. What? You want to postpone to the next meeting? Pardon me? Postpone to the next meeting. Well, I would be, that, that's not the right word, but that's what we'll, that's what we'll do, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, let's see, we'll, we'll, we'll adjourn the, we'll, we'll Pause. suspend the hearing at, and reconvene at the next, at the, uh, October, what's the date? But Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, if the town of Menominee plan commission is not meeting until November, um, we can't taking oh, okay. it up at our next meeting isn't going to help. Well, we could we could we could close the hearing and take no action, in which case there have to be a new hearing. Right. That's what's no approach is no problem. That seems like the best option. Yeah. I, I I think so. Okay. So I will close the hearing, and uh, maybe since we have two. Things to take action on. Well, I'll, I'll suggest that we wait to take action and at the same on both of them at, uh, at the same time, and we'll move on to the second public hearing, um, which is the application for rezoning uh, Don Lentz from General Ag to R1 Residential One. Um, so I'll call that hearing to order. Um, and can you confirm the? Uh, notice. But, sorry, give me a second. I'm just transitioning over to the other sure. packet. All right. So this one was also noticed in the uh, Tribune Press Reporter and Colfax Messenger um, last Wednesday and the Wednesday before. And the neighbors were mailed notices as well. All right. Get a little closer here. All right, so our applicant for this one is Donald Lentz. Um, the agent is Jason Hubner. Um, they're requesting to change the zoning designation of a property from general ag to residential one. Um, their intent behind this is to allow for further subdivision of a property. Um, some background on this. Um, it was found, I believe, in... July or August that an illegal subdivision had occurred for this property. So it was originally a 7.99 acre tract. Um, and then a warranty deed was recorded on February 21st, 2024, that conveyed a parcel of unplatted land from the Lenses to Jason Huber, who is Hubner, who is an adjacent landowner. Um, at the time of the conveyance, Hubner held title to lot one of CSM number 903, and the conveyance was approximately 1.87 acres. So this left the Lenses with a approximately 6.1 acre property. So that's the one that we're looking at today is this remaining piece. Um, it should be noted that um, the property owner and the applicant, uh, Donald Lentz, is working with environmental services staff, including Tom Carlson, county surveyor, to correct um, the illegal subdivision. Um, however, this is a two-part correction. So Don is working to correct his property and get that um, officially mapped uh, using a CSM. And then Jason will also need to do the same for the property that he has. So... <clears throat> 
So the rezoning is consistent with the Dunn County Comprehensive Plan and the Town of Tainer's plans, which designate um, this area as agricultural and there are adjacent areas for low density residential development. Um, as far as suitability, um, there's a lot of steep terrain and it is classified as non-prime farmland by the NRCS. Um, so it's not really suited for agriculture. It would be better suited for residential development. There are slopes of like 45 degrees that would make large scale ag use very impractical. Um, and I'm just gonna bring up that map to show you what that looks like. Um, <clears throat> All right, so the property is this highlighted rectangle here, and I'm going to bring up the two foot contours. Wait for the computer to catch up. Well, they might not show up, but I can kind of show you. Oh, here we are. So it's difficult to see with this color, unfortunately, but everything on the if you can look at this where you see the clearing for the trees, that is the flattest part of the property. Thanks, Tom. Um, going down to like the edges, I would say southeast, that is really steep there. And then it, it's also steep on the other side. So this kind of like is a curved ridge around that open space area. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna flip on the zoning map so I can just show you that while we're here. So again, this is pretty much general ag out here. We have some areas of conservation, um, things like that. <clears throat> so re uh, development trends. So there, it's it's been getting more residential out here, but it is generally pretty much agricultural, open space, and woodland. Um, in your packet, I'm just going to scroll down to find it, but we ha I uh, created a map that showed where all the residences are in this area. It's the map with the pink dots. <laughs> um, so I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of, of what the residential development actually does look like, and it does seem to be quite a bit in this general area. Um, you can see right across the street from Donald's little tiny rectangle property here, there's a house there, there's a house to the north east directly, a little bit farther to the northwest, um, south. So there's quite a bit popping up here. And as you get further out of this quarter mile area, there's a lot less residential development and it's been historically agricultural. Um, to the south, it's woodland, and most of that property is owned by the DNR. So less of a chance of that being developed for residential use or, or agriculture. All right, going back. So the town of Tainter reviewed the request and they recommended approval. Um, and it does align with the town's support for residential development in the area. Um, we're not finding any significant risks to public health or safety, um, provided that the development does comply with local, state, and federal regulations. Of course, wastewater and water systems would need to meet these standards to ensure residential safe residential use. Um, we know we did not find any historical or cultural resources on the property and rezoning this would not uh, would be unlikely to affect any historically significant features. Um, environmental impact, there is some concern that um, residential development of this property and clearing, um, especially with the steep slopes, could be um, it could cause some erosion issues. Um, in general, though, if, at least from Don's plan, he has stated in his application that he's only planning to build or to split this into two lots with two houses. And knowing that the erosion or the 
slopes are as steep as they are, it's unlikely that it would be split any further and any houses would be able to be built on those parts of the property anyway without an extreme amount of difficulty and cost. Um, <clears throat> where did I leave off? So keeping the property under GA zoning would restrict subdivision potential and would limit future use. Um, it should be noted that that illegal land division, as of right now, no homes could be placed on that other lot, the one that's no longer owned by Don, um, until that's corrected. So that would be a separate density issue from this property. Um, I guess I, I, I believe that the slopes, the location of the property on the on the town road, uh, the narrow depth of the property, and just the acreage out there um, would limit more than maybe a couple houses, if that, on the property. So I feel like rezoning to R1 would be the most viable option for the property um, and would make sense for the area. So um, staff is recommending approval based on the criteria and, and analysis provided. Um, the proposed zoning changes in the public interest aligns with comprehensive plan and supports low density residential development in the area. Of course, the committee may recommend approval or denial of the request after considering the ordinance, public input, and other relevant information. Um, if approved, uh, we'll draft an ordinance for the county board consideration, and should the board deny it, um, we'll create a resolution reflecting that decision. And with that, that is the end of my report, but I can definitely answer any questions you may have. Do we have any questions? Sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, so what's your thought on spot zoning? You look around it, it's all like general egg, general egg all over. And you got Hoffman Hills real close. And a friend of mine back 30 years ago got a bobcat there, which means nothing. But I mean, it's spot zoning. I've been told ever since I've been on the board that we should try to not go that direction because we're only going to help like one person. Because I, I talked to the previous owner his son, and he told me about the land and that kind of stuff. So I'm just kind of concerned about the spot zoning part of it. Yeah, I agree. That's a really good concern to have. And we have, you know, that's something we definitely want to avoid. And, you know, that is not good planning practice. So when we look at spot zoning, we have to keep in mind that spot zoning isn't just a difference in zoning compared to the rest of the area. Like, like you mentioned, it needs to benefit more than just the property owner. So understanding that we recently had a housing study that identified that the county needs more housing. Um, our comprehensive plan also identifies this area as low density residential agricultural. And the town has agreed that this fits their pattern of development and their intentions for development in the area. So those things are strong arguments against spot zoning. So essentially, it does not meet the definition of spot zoning because we have those other factors at play. However, I would definitely um, encourage the committee to listen to public comment and other concerns um, regarding this and keep that in mind. Hey, thank you, Gary. Thanks, Ann. Um, Any other questions? So we have several people today that want to provide testimony. Uh, again, what we're going to ask you to do is come up and use the, the microphone up there, and I'll have to have your name and address, and then I do have to formally swear you in. Um, so we have five people. Uh, let's start with the applicant. Is Don Lentz here? Don, you want to come up, please? And uh, Name and address? Donald Lentz, 
N5206 610th Street, Menominee. Okay, raise your hand, please. Do you swear your testimony today will be truthful in every respect? Yes. Okay, go ahead. That I've owned the property for 45 years or a little better. Uh, have not received anything from agriculture all from it. It's top part of two and a half, three acres is flat. And then it drops off to your uh, 45 degree angle or that, and that's been covered with trees. And it has produced some trees, but uh, non-sellable. So the, at my age was looking at getting, having somebody else have some use out of it and that and uh it's on the hill needing uh residential area it would fit into an ease of building at this time okay so any questions uh, mr lenz okay thank you very much so i'll go from the top we have four other folks uh uh, Chris Jenin. I'm, I'm on the next. You're on the next? Yep. Oh, okay. Anybody else? Uh, so is uh, Sarah Kennard next also? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Dan and Linda Stoffel. Linda Stuffel at E7286, 770th Avenue, Colfax. Okay. Raise your hand, please. Do you swear your testimony will, will be truthful in every respect? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we live um, on the south, to the south of this parcel. This parcel was uh, originally part of um, land owned by my parents. Our driveway comes off or onto the town road on the west side of Hanky Hill. It's, the locals refer to it as Hanky Hill. It's a big hill. We have several concerns. One is that there's a lot of wildlife. We have um, a small deer herd that um, visits our home on a regular base, basis, and they travel through the woods that goes up that hill. The other thing is that coming off our driveway onto Whitetail Road, which goes over Hanky Hill, um, we realize that it is a safety hazard because that hill is high, people come flying over it, and there's more and more traffic there than there you know, every year there's more because it, it's a cut across over to Whitetail um, Golf Course and to 40. There's also farm machinery that come and use that road. And sometimes, not, not on a regular basis, but there's also semis. In the wintertime, in order to get over that hill, um, I need to go down to our neighbors and get a run at it to get up over to the flat on top of this hill. But um, we're, the neighbors are very concerned about the traffic and the, ha the possible hazards that this will result in having one or two more driveways coming off on the top of the hill, having to deal with the, the traffic that's coming up on either side. And I'm wondering, has a traffic um, study or whatever been done um, that would address that because um, we just can't see how um, you could avoid some some pretty serious incidences with that combination. So that's what our, our concern is, is the safety. 
Does the committee have any questions? Sorry, it may not be appropriate for you. Did you attend the town of Tainer hearing on this? We were unaware of that. We did not get any notice. Okay, I was. I'm just wondering if the town has taken up the issue of traffic and traffic safety. We don't know. No, I don't know. <clears throat> Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Um, Dan, did you want to say anything? Okay. Uh, Terry, Terry Nearson. You don't want to speak? Okay. All right. Thank you, Terry. All right. So that's, I think, all the public comment on this. All right. Um, Any, do you have any further comments or questions? Monica. Um, I see that the town decision was not unanimous. Do you know what the concerns were of the person who voted no on that? I guess I, oh, we'll look at the meeting minutes to remember, um, but I can certainly do that. I'm just scrolling down to it right now just to see. Because they did have it go through the town and their planning commission. So. Um, let's see. The town meeting. The notes in their meeting minutes. I'll just read the whole thing. So Don Lentz was present to provide information regarding the rezone request. Currently, the parcel does not meet Dunn County zoning ordinance requirements of eight acres for one residential parcel. The rezone would allow for at least one residence to be built. Uh, the parcel is currently not being used for productive ag land and has not been for many years. One neighbor, Aaron, and I, I apologize if I pronounced this wrong, Schiffelbein Bean, responded by email against the rezone request. The plan commission reviewed and discussed the rezone request at their July meeting and recommended approval to the town board. Discussion followed. Justin moved to approve the rezone request from GA to R1. Marty seconded the motion. Roll call vote. Randy, yes. Jerry, yes. Jeremy, yes. Marty, yes. Justin, yes. Motion carried. Um, and then I can just jump to the uh, Planning Commission one real quick here. We might as well. Um, <clears throat> Don Lent's concept to subdivide approximately 6.1 acre parcel. He currently has the property listed for sale and stated it would allow for a broader group of buyers to purchase the property if the property were split due to a lower purchase price. Concept map was provided and reviewed with discussion following. Due to the steep slope of the property, it was stated that the buildable portion of the entire 6.1 acre property would realistically only allow for two residences. Don will see if rezone request is approved before having surveying completed. Um, and I just, I should probably comment on um, the first town meeting minutes mentioned that um, because the property didn't meet the eight acres, they couldn't build a residence. So as the property exists, they could build one residence there. Um, we wouldn't be restricting that. And, um, when it was still that 7.99, they would be able to split have, I believe they would have been able to, it doesn't meet the like eight acre threshold to split that in two pieces anyway. So <clears throat> the only way they'd be able to put two houses for this is if they do this land, uh, rezone it to R1 and then subdivide the property into two lots. Um, so Either way, as it exists, they could build a house there, but because he's seeing, it sounds like from the meeting minutes, that buyers are more interested in smaller lots, um, he's considering, he's trying to get it split. Okay. Any further questions or observations? Okay. Just, uh, Mike, quick, yeah. just as a follow up, uh, Monica's there was one person that voted against it on the on the plan commission. Did that say why? Uh, I read the entire minutes, so I. Oh, you did read the entire yeah. minutes of the yep. plan commission. Sorry, yeah, okay. I read all both of them. Okay, so thanks. they didn't mention yeah. it. Okay, thanks. 
Mr. Chairman, yeah. even though there's a housing shortage in Dunn County, but that does not mean that every piece has to be somehow divided to, to make that possible. Because going up that hill, and I live, I got some land real close to it, and that'd be almost impossible to have more homes there going up that hill. And in wintertime, that fills up with snow fairly easily. So, like you said, sometimes every piece of property cannot be developed for housing. Okay. Anything else? Anything else you want to add in? Okay. Oh, I, I guess one thing that I could add is that it would be up to the, so this is a town road. So the town would be making the decision on the driveways, whether they would require a split driveway or two driveways or access Shared from a or... different location or none at all. That would that would be up to the town for sure. Okay. Um, then we will close the hearing. And without objection, uh, I will move uh, items. Uh, item 10A and 10B up to the next, uh, up on the agenda to this point. That would be the consideration of uh, action on these two requests. So 10A is the application for rezoning. Uh, is there a motion to, uh, to postpone and or a motion to uh, take no action? Is there, any, is there a motion to take action or take no action? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I would move approval of the rezone request in the interest of promoting important housing. Um, we're I'm talking, talking about, about the, first, the first one would be the, I'm sorry, the rezone of Dunn County GA to GC. Oh, 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 yeah. sorry, that's right. Okay. All right, I put you on the hook there. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. I'm not doing that. So this would be the motion to, uh, to uh, for the county to salt to uh, uh, change the zoning designation on land that it owns from GA to GC. Um, we will not have a recommendation from the Planning Commission for quite some time. So uh, we close the hearing and we need to decide whether we want to go ahead and take action or we want to just take no action. Uh, could I make a motion? Yes. Mr. Chair, I would like to move that uh, 10A application rezoning Dunn County GA to GC that we postpone until we hear from the township. Okay. Is there a second to that? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Okay, thank you. Uh, 10B, application for rezoning from Don Lens from GA to R1. Um, do I have a motion up? Any action one way or the other on this? May I move approval at this point for the correct? <laughs> <laughs> item, Mr. Chairman. Okay. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? A second. And a second. Um, any discussion? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I look at the township said it was okay. Uh, as far as the driveways, uh, once again, they have to do safe driveways. There's distances they have to take care of. Uh, there was one house that's possibly could have been built there anyway, and this is a second house. Uh, I think the safety things are something that it's always needs to be concerned, but uh, the town must have looked at that and they have the opportunity to put the driveways or driveway uh, where it's safe. So I am for this proposal. Any other comments? Yeah, I'm I'm persuaded by the town having reviewed it, uh, and it, it uh, seems to meet the criteria that we measure these things again based on the report from staff, uh, and the and understanding that the safety concerns of the roads are of the driveways are really a town matter. I would support it too. 
Uh, so we have a motion. Is there any other question? No. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor of approval of the of the rezone request, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. no. Uh, the uh, request is approved. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And now we have no staff reports, nothing placed on the agenda by the chairperson. Uh, consideration of actions, uh, 8A, determine if an existing substandard width assessment in the town of Sand Creek is suitable to provide access for a proposed certified survey map. Mr. Carlson. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Tom. So um, what we have before us this morning, I, I need to present a few documents. So just bear with me here as I try to present the report and keep the screen current for you. Um, so we've got a, this is this property is located in the town of Sand Creek. There's a existing certified survey map that was done years ago. Um, I have it up here on the screen. Um, let me just shrink it a little bit. So you can see the boundary here in purple. That's um, lot number one of a certified survey map. It's roughly 81 acres. Um, our family LLC owns that property. They also own the next 40 to the north. So I've got a laser pointer here, but they also have the next full 40 to the north. Um, in July, And over time, back in 2015, they acquired an easement um, from Jerome, I believe it was Jerome Foods, um, for this green line right here. And it's a 33-foot wide easement that runs down an existing field road um, to provide, I believe, a secondary access point to this property because they they certainly have frontage here along 1400th Avenue for a ways, but they also again have this 33 foot easement was recorded originally in 2015. Um, here's kind of a, I'm gonna bring up the county GIS website as that shows it just a little bit better. <clears throat> okay, so this is the outline of that certified survey map again in green. And then if you can see, this is the other 40 up here. So in July of this year, um, our family LLC deeded this entire 40 right here, plus all that part of lot one of this certified survey map lying within the northeast northwest of section seven. So they basically took this 81 acres, severed off, it ended up being about 13 acres here and included it with this 40 for a total of 53 acres. Well, breaking up this certified survey map, um, triggered a violation of the county land division ordinance because this is its own contiguous tract in green separate from this 40. So this 13 acres is a new parcel less than 20 acres which would have required mapping as a certified survey map. So um, I'm currently working with them to get that that fixed. So as part of that and I have a certi <clears throat> certified survey map has actually been submitted to the office. Um, it was after the packet went out. So I'm currently reviewing this certified survey map um, of 13 acres and it's showing or access to that um, is by way of the 60 or 33 foot wide access easement. So let me go back to the packet. Bear with me here. <clears throat> so again, this 33 foot easement follows an existing field road that runs up through here. So that's why we're here this morning. Um, the county land division ordinance says that um, if you have an exit, all easements on certified survey maps have to be 66 feet wide. If it's an archived easement, um, in this case existing, that's less than 66 feet. We have a provision in the ordinance. It's set, I'll read it to you verbatim. Existing private roads or access easements that are proposed to provide access to newly created lots shall meet the requirements of this section. If said roads or access easements do not meet such requirements, the subdivider shall meet with the town and the committee to determine the suitability of the existing easement and determine what conditions, if any, need to be met to provide for adequate access. So, um, 
Chris Jerome is with us here today. He's in the back of the room. Um, he's representing our family LLP. Um, Mr. Jerome did reach out to Mike Nelson, who was the town chair for Sand Creek, and got a verbal response from him that the town was okay accessing this new parcel with the existing 33-foot easement. I've also reached out to Mr. Nelson just for some formal statement in writing, send me an email. Um, I have been unable in the last two weeks to uh, get a return phone call from Mr. Nelson. Um, Mr. Jerome has also reached back out to Mr. Nelson with no success. So um, right now we have a, a verbal from Mike. I guess I would prefer to have something a little more you know, concrete in writing. Um, but again, I... It, it, <clears throat> It seems like a fairly simple matter to me. The easement is there. It's been there since 2015. Um, it's not like we're accessing a 44 lot subdivision back there with a very narrow road. It's a 53 acre parcel. Um, it it would seem to me, and in talking with Chris, that the easement is more than adequate. Um, but it is a formality. We do need to meet as a committee today to determine what conditions, if any, need to be met. So that's your role, I guess, as a committee. Um, if you're looking for my opinion, I think it's it's certainly fine. You know, 33-foot easement serving a 53-acre parcel. I don't know the future plans for the parcel. Perhaps Chris can speak more to that, although our family LLC doesn't own it anymore, but I, I presume it's, it's mainly recreational land for hunting. Um, in theory, a residence could be put on this yellow parcel here that's being surveyed. So it certainly could be um, used for residential purposes. But I don't have anything more to add. Chris is here. Um, I don't know if he has anything to add or if you have any questions um, that I can't answer. Um, he's certainly here to, to be a resource for you for that. So I'll turn it back over to you, Tom. Sure. Chris, uh, you want to? Mr. Jerome, 1198, 16th Ave, Barron, Wisconsin. You don't need to be sworn in for this. We're not okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, a couple things I just want to add here. Um, it is for recreation. It's it's uh, it's wooded. There's a little area for a food plot or whatever. As far as parcel one there, there is a deed restriction. Uh, no residences within 1,000 feet of a turkey shed. So that's off the table. Hormel owns that now, and that was just part of the deal when we uh, when we split that. Any questions? And the one other thing I would add is, I mean, I do have frontage on the road down there, but the the terrain there is is such that it's it's not doable to to come across. There's a huge ridge. Kind of runs right up the spine of the, of the uh, east east uh, blue line there. Yeah, right there. That that ridge there is super steep all the way up. So it's it's not very realistic to to do a different easement there. Okay. I mean I could do an easement and still use the other one, but I mean that's any questions for Mr. Jerome? Thanks, Chris. Any further questions or discussions about the uh, request? Mike. Um, I think uh, Chris answered the question, but so the, the thousand foot res deed restriction would not allow any houses to be built on that yellow parcel? Is that I where we're done? Gave to Hormel that we that put deed restriction on everything that that we got in that transaction that we would never build that nobody can build a house within a thousand yards of a turkey barn because they don't want to deal with uh, you know odor complaints or whatever. So it's just part of the deal. Tom, um, can you take your pointer and show me what we're talking about right there? 
So I assume it's this full 40, Chris. Okay. It's right. So it'd be this certified survey map. It'd be this here. Yes, right here. And here. Yep, here. <clears throat> so everything that our family LLP owns out there apparently is deed restricted for no residences. Everything, uh, okay. A thousand yards or a thousand feet, was it? Uh, yeah, I guess it really doesn't matter, but yeah. It's, I think it's okay. Thank you. That's good. Okay. Anything else? Can I have a motion to? No. Oh, then we the other. Is there anyone else who wants to speak to this property? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. A motion, one or the other. To approve that we need a motion to either approve or disapprove the variance request. This seems pretty reasonable. I will move approval. Can I have a second? I'll second. Uh, any further discussion? Tom Carlson had some reservations about uh, not talking to the town board. Do you? But then you said seems a reasonable thing to do. Uh, what? What do you recommend? I guess my my thought is I would have liked to have received a response from Mike. And uh, um, I do have another phone number for him that I can certainly try. Um, so I will attempt to reach out one more time. But if I don't hear anything, I guess, you know, sometimes you have to trust people. And Chris says he he certainly spoke with Mike and that a person's word is is good enough for me. So, I mean, I I feel comfortable. I think if the town would really have had an objection, I would have heard something by now. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, and the easement is is there. I mean, it's existing. It's not like we're, we're creating a new one and we're looking for permission from somebody. We're just kind of looking for forgiveness after the fact. And and it wasn't created illegally. I want to make that clear. In 2015, there were no standards for easements. So a 33-foot wide easement that was created in 2015 was perfectly acceptable. It's just we're dealing with that easement now that's narrower. And personally, I don't see an issue with it. So I'm I'm comfortable moving ahead if the committee is. So uh, let me call call the question. All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. So the motion carries and the variance is approved. Um, thanks for coming, Chris. Thank you. Uh, item B, variance request in the town of Menominee to create a certified survey map lot that is bisected by a proposed access easement. Mr. Carlson. Okay, thanks again. Um, so there's actually two variance requests here on the agenda and they're both interrelated. So I'll cover them both, but I guess we're gonna need it separate. They're listed as separate action items on the agenda. So um, I'll give you a little background information. <clears throat> Let me move down in the packet here. Um, hopefully everybody can see this okay. I know it's kind of dark on the screen. Um, so um, the petitioners, uh, Sarah and John Kennard, Sarah is actually with us today. Um, her and her husband are looking for two variance requests. Um, they want to create a new lot of about 12 acres on their property. Um, they currently own about 99. They want to parcel 12 acres off. Um, in order to do that, they're going to have to prepare a certified survey map and they're going to need two variances. One would be allowing for a proposed lot to be bisected by an access easement. The second one would be a variance to create a new access easement that's less than 66 feet, feet in width. So some background, as I'd mentioned, they own 99 acres. Um, have it up here on the screen. So they have um, a full 40 up here and then they own another 20 right to the north of that, the south half of a 40. And then they own this full 40 down here that's severed by 440th Avenue. And then there's one small little exception that somebody else owns in the northwest corner. So that 
those three parcels, I guess, make up their contiguous tract of land. 99 acres. The current zoning out there is General Ag. Um, there's a driveway that's in that um, is running up through the property. It's kind of hard to see on here, but it, it runs up between the buildings and provides access to the remainder of the, the farm ground. That driveway, if I move ahead in the packet, has been there since at least 1938. We have access to the old photos, so you can see it here on my screen. Um, so we know we know the driveway's been there a long time. Um, <clears throat> so the proposed new lot um, is going to include the existing farmstead and other associated improvements. Um, it contains areas with deep ravines and steep slopes along the east and west side. Um, so their daughter intends to purchase the lot and is going to continue family ownership of the property. John and Sarah are going to retain 60 acres that lie immediately north, and they're going to continue farming not only their property, but the property they're intending to deed to their daughter. If I go down in the packet here, um, this, and again, it's it's really hard to see here, but this is the proposed new lot. They're basically taking everything in that 40 line north of the town road and carving that out. It'd be about around 12 acres. The red dashed line here represents the current driveway that runs through there. So um, when they deed, when they create this parcel and deed this to their daughter, they're gonna need to retain an easement over this red line or the existing driveway so they can access the remaining 60 acres to the north, right? Um, another option is to acquire an easement from one of the neighbors. Well, why would they do that when they already have a driveway? It's been there since at least 1938. It's been working just fine. So um, so to create this new parcel, they're going to have to prepare a certified survey map and full compliance with the county land division ordinance. And that's where we get into these two variance requests. Um, so the one part of the county ordinance says no lots created under this chapter shall be bisected by an access easement. Well, by them reserving this easement here, they're effectively bisecting this proposed 12 acre lot that's going to their daughter. So they're asking for a variance of that. And then also the ordinance requires a 66 foot wide easement. Um, the location of the current farm buildings out here do not allow for the easement to be 66 feet wide without running into buildings. And the ordinance says no existing or planned or proposed structures can be located in an access easement. So that's the second request they're ask, asking for. Number one, bisecting this lot with the easement. Number two, making the easement narrower so as to not impact any structures. Right now, we don't have a width. No surveying has been done out here. We just know 66 feet isn't going to work. 50 might work, 55. I guess we're going to know at some point when they get a surveyor out there. But at this point, the variance is just left more general or wide open. They're asking for a variance of less than 66 feet. So obviously they'll make it as wide as wide as they can. So whether that be 50, 55, we're not sure at this point. <clears throat> so section 16.83 of the County Land Division Ordinance allows for a variance request. So that's what they're that's what they've um, done. I received an application. They've paid their fees. Um, all that information is in the packet. There's a, Sarah included a written brief that you all should have um, been able to read in the packet explaining why they're doing this. Um, so anyway, um, if the variance is not approved, this driveway is not going anywhere. It's going to stay in place. Um, they won't be allowed to divide this property off um, into a more manageable piece for their daughter. So it does create a hardship. Um, the ordinance talks about unique topographic conditions um, in Sarah's brief and, you know, confirming it with the contours. There's some very steep slopes on the east and west sides of this new lot making it very impractical to put a new new driveway in, right? Because one thing they could do to avoid all this is to put a reserve an easement over one, either the east side or the west side, so as to not bisect that lot. Well, that's not practical given the terrain. Steep slopes are considered an environmentally sensitive area, and they would certainly be disturbing those areas, um, which is um, contrary to the purpose and intent of our, our land division ordinance. So um, anyway, and acquiring a new easement for one of the neighboring properties would result in an undue hardship. So 
Um, I'm not going to go through all the purpose statements in the ordinance. Um, that was all in the packet. If there's specific questions on any of those, I'd be happy to, to stop at one of those and discuss it. Um, lastly, I guess when weighing these variance requests out, it shall not be contrary to Wisconsin statute or Wisconsin administrative code. And the two variances that the canards are asking for, I don't believe, um, certainly are not um, contrary to state statute or Wisconsin administrative code. So let me just go through the rest of the pack and make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, so there's the written brief from the canards, their application. Um, yeah. And like I mentioned, uh, Sarah is here. If you have any specific questions for her, I don't know if there's anything additional she would like to add. Um, so I will turn it back over to you, Tom, at this point. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions from the committee, Mr. Carlson? This point. Okay. Sir, you want to make any comments? Share your thoughts with us. Just <coughs> name and address. Sarah Kennard, E3649, 440th Avenue, Menominee. I I have rough measurements that I did between the buildings of the easement. Uh, so the house to the lower south shed is 62 and a half feet. And then the, um, what we call the garage, which is just north of the house, between that and the barn is 58 and a half feet. Any questions? Um, here, my, here, yeah. Does your daughter plan on, on building here someday up in here? No, she is buying the house. We will okay. move off the property. My husband and I will move off the property, but we will continue to farm. Uh, it's financially imperative for her to buy the entire 100 acre at this point. Uh, we want to provide the opportunity for her as my parents did to us. We acquired this 40 originally, and then over time acquired more land um, as a feasible way to keep, keep it in the family. And it is our desire to do the same for her, our only child. My my only you know concern would be that there's sixty some feet in there, but if you got a if somebody would buy that land from your daughter and build a house back there, there'd be very little room for a like a, a snowplow to go back up in there to make room. If your daughter would sell that land and kept an access to get to that twenty acres. She still would have to, I mean, if you go back to the snowplow and plow it out, there wouldn't be a lot of land left. We're retaining. I know you're okay. retaining, but okay. you know, that don't go on forever, ever. Right. That's my only concern. Uh, a question for Mr. Carlson. And yep. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Mr. Carlson, uh, you, with uh, an easement like this, uh, don't we have a limit on houses that can be built on shared driveways at least? But could, could someone have an easement and go back and build a bunch of houses using the easement? A maximum of four, four lots can be accessed by way of an access easement. After that, you'd have to dedicate and turn it into a town road. Thank you. Any further questions? Do I have a motion one way or the other on this? Monica? Um, I'd like to move approval of the variance request to create an access easement with a right of way width of less than 66 feet. Uh, 
Could I ask for a friendly amendment or to the less motion? less than 66 feet, but why more why than. Why don't we get a okay. second? I'll second motion. it. I'll okay. second it. Now you go ahead for discussion. Good. We adjust the motion to make it less than 66 feet, but at least 33 feet. Why do you want to do that? Well, if you say less than 66, uh, I don't think they're going to, but you come back with 20. That's what less than 66 means. The 33 foot easement has been there since the 30s. I, I understand that part, but if we just have a motion saying less than 66 feet, that's anything from zero to 66. And right now it's 33. We don't want it less than 33. Uh, Mr. Carlson and I. If I could just clarify, there is no easement there now. There right. is no 33 foot. It's an existing driveway. Driveway. Yeah. But I, I, to your point, yes, you're correct. If we leave it wide open, they could come back with a 10 foot wide easement. I, I doubt that's going to happen. But if, if, if we want to be certain, you certainly could. Yeah. Right. Less than 66, but at least or at a minimum of X number of feet. I think the committee certainly has has that authority. Um, and, and while I have the floor, if I could just point of <laughs> clarification, you jump down to the second. There's two variance right. requests here and you're on the second one. So if we want to take them in order, I would make a friendly I'm sorry, I missed that time. statement that we may want to go. We back, all need to read the agenda back today. And on, so um, we'll defer action on the second eight uh, B motion and go back to uh, item B. Um, <laughs> are there any? I think it's related. It's it's enough related that we don't have to ask for uh, further clarification. But uh, is there a motion to to one way or one way or the other on eight B, the the certified survey lot map? Um, yes, I would like to make a motion to approve the variance request to create a certified survey map lot that is bisected by a proposed access easement. Thank you. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. That variance is approved. Okay, now we're down to uh number c <laughs> I think we have a we have Everybody. a motion and a second and we have some uh discussion that we started uh any uh, continue the, the discussion uh, i would like to make a motion to amend the original motion okay to include the wording at least 33 feet is there a second to that amendment? I'll second it. Uh, any further discussion of that? Would you summarize your argument again, Mike, just real quickly for the record? Well, I don't think it's going to happen now, but people die. Um, things happen. Life comes into the, and uh, someone else could take over and say, I want a 20 foot one because it's more convenient. I'm going to build something else there. Um, so why not uh, make sure we have it in writing that it's got to be between this? Uh, what's the downside? And I don't think there is one. Thank you. Mr. Carlson, do you have any thoughts on that again? I don't have thoughts one way or the other. Uh, other than for, from conversations with Sarah, they're going to continue to farm that back there. And, and I know things can happen. Um, land gets bought and sold every day. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I understand Supervisor Kinnear's point that if we leave it wide open, they could come back with a very narrow easement. Um, practically speaking, I don't think they're going to, it's not going to serve their purpose because if they need to get a combine up in those upper fields and you know, green trucks and everything else. They're I have to trust that they're gonna make it as wide as, you know, wide as possible. Once their surveyors out there, they'll pick the nearest foot and based on her measurements, I'm presuming it's gonna be in that fifty foot range, fifty to fifty five foot range. So um but to Mike's point, limiting limiting it to not less than thirty three feet, I don't see any harm in that either. I don't. So I, I, 
I guess I don't have a say one way or the other. Any other questions? So we have a motion and an amendment, and we're voting on the amended motion. Uh, and we're voting on the amendment. On the amendment. To uh, require to set a 60 and 33 foot um, uh, range. Uh, all in favor of the amendment? Wait, hang on. Sorry. Uh, may I ask a question? Yeah. Um, is it possible to get Ms. Kennard's um, opinion about whether the 33 foot would be a hardship for them? Sure. Uh, pardon me. I don't know all the rules and regulations. The only other measurement I have is between the garage and the light pole, which is 28 feet. I don't know if that an easement only covers structures or that's the only input I have. So, so you're saying that, that, that the easement would, how are you going to ask that, Tom? I think what she's getting at is there's a light pole near the driveway that, you know, I guess if, if need be, that could be moved. Yeah. And, would... and with easements, I mean, it's, you know, if there's a shed in an easement, that's one thing. If there's a light pole, that's a whole, whole different. With easements, you just have to make sure that the person's use of it is not being infringed upon, you know, or restricted in some way. So um right now i assume the light pole is just fine driving past it with equipment and it'll probably be just fine going forward personally i wouldn't worry about it okay thank you sir That's all I have. so we're voting on uh the amendment, amendment. that's been uh, moved and seconded to uh establish this, this uh range of of distances uh all in favor of the motion, say aye. Hi, after listening to her, uh, I'm thinking that I'm going to vote against my own amendment. <laughs> <laughs> Wife, man. Uh, okay, we have uh, the sec second question. All, all in a opposed to the amendment, say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Uh, uh, the eyes, the, no, the nays have the nays it. Have the, it. Uh, the amendment is rejected. Now back to the original motion. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion on the initial motion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Cooperative item D, cooperative agreement with Beaver Creek Reserve as designated cooperative agent for Lake Monitoring and Protection Network grant. Chase. How you doing? Um, this is something that we bring back for the last probably three, four years. I think 2020 might be the first year. So basically this is a, a, a grant scenario to the Department of Natural Resources where they provide funding to counties um, to support aquatic invasive species work, outreach, education, management, that sort of thing. Um, counties in our area and throughout the state um, have an option to uh, basically uh, agree to a cooperative agreement with some third party um, and then the funds that would normally come in to the county for this type of work uh, get uh, funneled directly to that cooperative um, agency. So in this case, and what we've been doing, and and I think uh, nine counties around us are doing, is using utilizing Beaver Creek Reserve as our cooperative um, agent for aquatic invasive species work. And therefore, um, the action before you today is to allow that to continue. It's on an annual basis. So this would be approval for a cooperative agreement for 2025 aquatic invasive species calendar year or season. Um, currently, our relationship with Beaver Creek Reserve and Bree um, Cloxine is the uh, direct agent working in our county um, has been very, very good. We've re we received reports um, as time has progressed in this um, process. We see more and more action within Dunn County. 
um, particularly maybe aware um, this year. A nasty aquatic invasive species has been found in our lakes Tainer and Monoman, zebra mussels, as well as Lake O'Galley. Um, so Beaver Creek has, and Bree herself and her um, partners have been active in providing education and training for um, citizens and participants around in and around those lakes. So I think um, my recommendation is that we continue this um, a cooperative agreement with Beaver Creek Reserve. Um, we don't directly see those funds come into our budget. Um, they go directly from DNR to Beaver Creek. And for Dunn County's portion, it's around just shy of $12,000 uh, for the year. So I guess if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. Any questions? I have a motion to approve the cooperative agreement with Beaver Creek Reserve. I move approval, we move Mr. Chairman. Thank approve. you. Is there a second? Gary seconds. All in favor, uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Both say no. Motion carries. Item 10-8989A. Approval of the 2025 Wildlife Abatement Claims Program Budget. Yep, and Alex and Elias is here again to speak on that, so I think he's just going to come up and um, give a rundown on that program again. Seems like we always have a, a long Alex meeting when you're here, Alex. <laughs> you're always at the end. <laughs> yeah, so I'm Alex and Elias. I administer the Wildlife Damage Abatement and Claims Program on behalf of Dunn County. Uh, there's going to be two or three claims in the county this year, so I don't, I didn't, I'm not going to do a detailed summary of enrollment and participation because I'll be at a couple more meetings this fall and winter and I figured I'd do it then. What I'm looking to do today is what we do every October, which is approve the budget for the next year. So approving the budget for 2025. Uh, budget just includes salary, abatement costs, you know, trapping, shooting permit administration, fencing, et cetera, um, vehicle usage, travel. And then there's also a line item uh, for the deer donation program, the money that comes to processors for donating venison comes through this budget as well. We try to keep these budgets as flat as possible, but there was an increase of eight hundred fifty one dollars and ninety five cents from the twenty twenty four budget. Minor increases to salaries, mileage, travel services and vehicle usage. But um, other than that, largely unchanged. I think the program's going well in the county. I work with Chase well. I think the cooperators appreciate having this program available to them. And I can answer any questions you may have, but my recommendation would be to approve the budget and approve participation in the venison donation program, which is a line item on this budget. So that's the uh, uh, motion that we'd be signing. Any questions? Alex, or case. I would just make make a comment, Mr. Chair. Um, just a reminder that the difference with this program versus what the previous agenda item was, where the previous agenda item money comes directly from DNR to our partner or agency that we work with. In this case, um, because there's two agencies involved, um, USDA of what Alec works for, and then um, DNR, Department of Natural Resources. We as a county pay USDA when we receive invoices, and then we seek reimbursement from DNR, and then DNR reimburses us for. It. So there's really you know, there's a time period where we're you know um, having to be the middle person, but it is a hundred percent reimbursed program through DNR. Any other questions? Did I ask for a motion? I can't remember. Did I? I did. No, okay, so motion to uh, approve for anyone. I'll move approval, Mr. Chairman. And I will second it. All right, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Both say no. Motion is approved. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Um, We did 10, both items on 10. Uh, any announcements from anyone? Future meeting date is October 16th. And we are adjourned.
Thanks, everybody.